Welcome back around to theCUBE here at theCUBE's NYSC East Coast Studios and Access Point, part of our NYSC Wired community. It's an open access network, bringing leaders together. It's our mixture of experts. We talk about the leaders who are the experts, where all the reasoning happens here on theCUBE. We have the CRO from Databricks here. Ron, great to see you, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, excited to be here. Chief Revenue Officer of Databricks. So first of all, your valuation's awesome. Congratulations <laughs> on the monster you. valuation. Yep. And the continued growth, we've been following Databricks from day one. You know, going back to the old Hadoop didn't work, Spark comes, <laughs> Data Lakes come in, Lake House, yep. and then just the adoption of having your data act together yep. really kind of sets the table for now what is the dream scenario for that, which is generative AI and totally. all the software and open source developers yep. leveraging this infrastructure. Yep. Um, so you guys have been really successful and also still in a great position, bringing in all kinds of new algorithms, abstracting away complexities, making it easier. Ollie was on yesterday detailing yep. that out. Um, quite a run. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely incredible. Yeah. I mean, we're yeah. just getting started. <laughs> How's the revenue numbers? <laughs> <laughs> doing well, we're doing all What's right. What's the forecast? Um, <laughs> exactly. You guys looking good from, the, as they say, middle of the fairway in golf. Um, yep. So, you guys have been using AI internally. One of those top stories that I wanted to get in with you is yep. how Databricks has been driving the innovation on the data side, obviously the Cal pedigree. Yep. Now they got a great computer science bench, a lot of schools coming together. Yep. So the tech, the vision, the strategy, all working. Yep. Now customers are using it, scaling up with the data lakes, yep. doing a lot more. What are the top things are you seeing from your customers right now uh, um, in terms of that kind of next level value from the data lakes yep. as they start to think through how to have a generational platform yep. for generative AI? I mean, if you think about it, like every single one of these companies will become a data and AI company, right? Like, uh, how they'll compete, win, lose mm -hmm. in the market is how they apply AI to their proprietary data. And so, you know, it's in every single industry. Like healthcare, you know, we've helped companies discover new cancer drugs, all the cancer treatment stuff. Agents like read all your medical records to try to, you yeah. know, uh, discover drugs for clinical trials, financial services for fraud detection. I mean, it's every single industry. But a big part of it is, you know, how do you apply AI to your proprietary data to have a competitive advantage? And we're seeing the on-prem adoption with AI factories and other large-scale systems because there's a fear of putting those crown jewels mm. into the public models. So the emergence of, um, and you guys talked about this, this last year at Data and AI Summit, which is there's a power law of smaller models, they work together, yep. and the need for customers to have their own. Yeah. So they can actually apply that to agents. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we're entirely in the cloud, so most of the modern data stacks will move to the cloud. But the biggest part is like, we're not doing general intelligence, right? A lot of the mo frontier models, you know, if you want to know how did World War II play out, like they've yeah. been trained on all the internet data. The proprietary data that's inside of companies, applying AI to that to make more strategic or better decisions or even automate processes, that's how AI gets applied to data. So we have partnerships with all the major frontier models, OpenAI, mm -hmm. Anthropic, Gemini, Llama, et cetera. And uh, you know, how you can kind of do governance, make sure that your yeah. data is secure, that it's not using your data, that's really important for these companies. And when they look at those models, they're thinking before, as a developer perspective, yeah. they're trying to build solutions. Yeah, totally. What's the biggest use case that you guys see in the enterprise right now that's got the most traction, momentum? I mean, it's all across the board, like I said. Like, there's massive, and it kind of depends yeah. on the industry, right? So, lots of people are trying to automate call centers. I mean, that's kind of bread and butter, right? Um, lots of agents doing yeah. that. Um, I saw some really cool developments in retail. Yeah. So, they were like measuring shrinkage on like yeah. food shrinkage and, and spoilage and things of that nature. They had agents to do repricing, agents to do promotions, which is really cool yeah. in retail. Um, Lots of uh, sports, you know, stuff, the yeah. new Fox Sports <laughs> app, Cletus, I don't know if you're a sports fan, yeah. but that's all AI driven by Databricks, so. Yeah, people uh, are using the AI agents to make their picks every on their fantasy Exactly, yeah. exactly, mine's not doing too good, yeah, but. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, I definitely, when I'm getting my picks in, I didn't put time to prep. <laughs> <laughs> I have gone to the exactly. cheat sheet. It's right there, I mean, ESPN, they're all publishing their content. I mean, why not grab it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, as CRO, I want to ask you kind of the revenue question because this comes up a lot in our, on all of our 
AI series, whether it's AI leaders, robotics factory, mixture of experts, the conversation has shifted over the past year from cost savings. Well, it's always been kind of like, oh, you get some cost savings and revenue bump, but never one, no one could really articulate that. Mm. Now it's kind of shifted towards um, revenue. Yeah, totally. So knowing Databricks' is pedigree, technical yep. company, yep. I'm sure you're under pressure to get the AI going for you. Yeah, for sure. So what are you guys doing on the revenue side of CRO? Could you share some of your thoughts around how you're using agents or AI for your team? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, first of all, like, as an AI company, we've adopted AI machine learning from the beginning. I would say like we were doing AI before AI was cool, right? And our entire uh, business is built on Databricks. We call it Databricks on Databricks, right? So we have our own lake house, we have all our data in there. I can predict our revenue within kind of one to 3%, you know, down to each customer. I know which customers are going to churn. We have next best action on which solutions we should be selling yeah. customers. Uh, we automate a lot of the account plans. Uh, we're automating some of the uh, you know, account follow-up, like lead follow-up, things of that nature. So we, we apply it literally across the business. And you use it for qualifying too as well? Yeah, totally. Like all in our marketing, like which campaigns should we run? How should we articulate yeah. specific you know, email campaigns or... All right, what's the know. coolest thing that's popped out of this that you could share? <laughs> uh, a story or, you know, some bluebird deal came in, or wow, we saved a company from going oh. somewhere else. There's got to be some stories. I mean, you know. literally, like if you look at how we can predict our revenue, like holidays, all that kind of stuff, like it follows the predictive line, like really, really close. And if it bumps off of it, we're like, why did it? And they're like, oh, they had some random holiday in this country that we didn't, you know, was on a Saturday last year and this year it's it fell on a Friday. So it made a, like literally it's that kind of precision. It's pretty cool. So precision cool. helps you guys do what? Adjust the sales tactics, your biz dev components? Well, again, you're trying to like grow the revenue as fast as possible. So knowing like, you know, what's making that happen, right? Is it, you know, certain AI trends, like a lot of the things we're selling into agents, you know, we just crossed a billion dollars in AI revenue. Uh, or, you know, is it some of our core data warehousing technology. Yeah. Like we'll kind of see all those trends of different products with different customers. We'll know like, oh, yeah. this customer looks like they're having some trouble. You know, let's lean in more there uh, with some of our executives or some yeah. of our technical folks. So. I was kind of hinting with this yesterday with Ali Godsey who came in yesterday. You guys pretty much nailed the technical buyer over the early years. Yeah. Data Lake, people loved it, yep. saved them money. Yep. Knock down their cloud bill, make it more efficient. Yep. You guys went serverless. Okay, that changed the game there. So a lot of technical well, customers love Databricks. Yeah, totally. Um, so, okay, so now bridge that with the business outcome focus because what we're hearing now from Ali and the team is, look at there's real work to be done. Let's just get that done yep. and get the proof points out there. So that's, that's a business outcome Totally. Thinking, take me through the mindset of how your motions have changed or, mm. or your customer behavior. Because yep. now you're crossing over into kind of the business realm of like, totally. what's the value? Yep. Can I quantify it? Yep. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you think about like, now AI is a CEO level discussion. It's not like a chief data officer, you know, uh, certainly it's part of the chief data officer and CIO, but it's a CEO. It's like, how are we leveraging AI to transform our business so that we don't get disrupted, right? How do we provide better customer service, all those things. So it's not about like, hey, let's just take out some legacy costs. It's literally like, how do we transform and offer new services to customers? How do we provide yeah. better service to customers? How do we launch new products? How do we open up new regions? So all of that's like, you know, more strategic of how, how yeah. do I grow my business? And so as a, you know, as a, you know, strategic uh, advisor to a lot of those customers, we need to know, like, we need to know more about their business and sell, like, how it's going to impact their business and help them with that. You know, last year I noticed Databricks had a big presence at NRF. Yep. Um, and as did Salesforce and others. Yep. I'm like, well, we cover, we're going to cover it again this year here out of our studio. Um, but uh, clearly that's an AI show. Yep. MWC, we knew that was an AI show totally. years ago. Totally. Supercomputing, that was a HPC, high performance yep. computing show now, like four years ago, it converted to full AI. That's a you know, semiconductor kind of level. Let's take retail for instance. AI can change the go to market 
for yep. any company. Yep. That's what you do. You're yep. handling the go-to-market yep. for Databricks. Yep. What lessons have you guys learned for that practitioner totally. that's saying, hey, look, I'm going to get the data set up, my tech team's on it, we're using Databricks. What's the next change? What, what's the impact to the executive who's leading the go-to-market? I mean, it's real-time applications for how they run their business. So, and it goes all the way down to like, the distributor or sales rep. Like if I'm running, you know, kind of sales for say a soft drink or Pepsi or, you know, some of the beer distributors, right? Like they are covering these stores. It'll literally tell them like, hey, you need to sell more of this kind of coffee, right? Or you should run this promotion or you should be doing this, like take a picture of display and it'll actually tell you like recommend, no, put this on the top shelf. like. Those kind of things, it's like pretty amazing, yeah. even down at that level. It's like a cockpit for uh, the distributor or salesperson. And then if you look at it as an executive, like we literally created like a, an application, like I said, it was like the intelligence store and it'll show like, okay, this particular store is doing really well. Uh, this store is not doing so well. What are the differences, right? Yeah. Is it demographics? Is, are they running different promotions? Uh, they had yeah. different product mix. So it's actually making real time recommendations to help you improve your business. So a lot of predictive. So a lot of predictions, exactly. What on the gender of AI side, on the customer, are they having any, any changes on how totally. their relationship with the customer changes? I mean, think about it. Now you're able to like talk to your data, right? So in terms of customer service on yeah. agents, right? Like it, you, know, you know, any business, like you have an issue, like, you know, you're trying to get service on your vehicle or you know, you have a return with a retailer. All of that is being automated with agents. It's yeah. going to pull your records, yeah. you know, your customer service. It's all going to try to automate that. And it, you know, it's going to improve the human service. Uh, in some cases it may, yeah. you know, replace the human service, but in most cases it's like gather all the information and still keep yeah. the human element of how you do customer service, right? So, What's it like being the CRO of Databricks um, the past decade? I mean, I think you guys are on the Series K. I mean, I mean <laughs> we might run, out, run of out of letters. We might run out of an alphabet. <laughs> we have to go to like hexadecimal or some sort of new numeric financing system. Yeah, exactly. I mean, quite a rocket ship. It's been um, so fun. What's been the biggest learnings for you as CRO? Because, I mean, you've navigated massive growth yep. while technology change has been happening. Yep. Well, I mean, first of all, like we have seven, uh, should I just keep going? It's still going, yeah, it's, yeah it's okay. the option bell. All right, no worries. Option market's you now know, closed. We have seven PhD founders that are, you know, created one of the greatest pieces of software in the world and just wanted to change the world, yeah. right? Like they literally gave it away for free, right? Yeah. And how we built a business and we built it together was, you know, we focused a lot on the customer. How do yeah. we provide value to the customer? And at each phase of the company, you have to kind of change. So I, as a leader, and how I've built the go-to-market trade, I've also had to change. So like, you know, kind of the zero to 20 or 50 yeah. million, it's product market fit, 100 million, it's like how you scale, build a, you know, a playbook, billion dollars, like, you know, much larger scale where you're having to replicate things and grow internationally and grow with partners. And now we're on hyperscale, you know, multiple yeah. billions. And so each phase is a little bit different. Yeah, and so which I've one's your favorite? Oh, um, <laughs> they're all different and they're all, they've all it's been like, amazing. It's like kids, they're great when they're in elementary school, they get just as hard when they go to the next level. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you exactly. miss them when they're gone, right? Exactly. You know? I mean, I have some, yeah. you know, just absolutely great memories building this company and, you know, again, we're just getting started, but uh, the early days of just trying to figure yeah. it out were super fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, scaling the company and, and literally, yeah. we've changed, you know, I mean, we've saved yeah. people's lives with some of the things we've done in healthcare, yeah. but like, just people in the company. Huge impact. Yeah, huge impact. Talk about the early days because I find that fascinating because I think you guys not only nailed it, you mentioned the PhDs, Ali and, and Matai and everyone else. Yeah. Um, one, actually, one of the founders was an intern at Cloudera when we started theCUBE. <laughs> that That's right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's how old we're, at, we're getting. We're 16 years old now with theCUBE. That's we've funny. Seen, we're getting the gray hairs too. Um, having an open source philosophy yeah. um, kind of runs counter to the sales, take that hill, hit the quota. Totally. How, that, because you have to rely on pull. Yep. How did you handle that? How did you guys take that? Because you got to be aware, but you also have to monetize, which kind of yep. is a subtle art. Totally. To that piece of the business. It's certainly foundational. Yep. What were some of the keys to doing that? Because, um, you know, organic 
freemium, premium, whatever you want to call it, yep. people are trying to do it, yep. you crack the code. Totally, like I think we innovated on the business model as much as we did on the technology, right? Like traditional open source was like just sell services and support. And the company strategy was let's, let's build a managed cloud service, right? And so, uh, you know, we used to call it open source core, yeah. basically, right? So like build some features yeah. that are proprietary that we can monetize. Yeah. And eventually though, we, we continue to innovate in terms of number of features and products. So now it's not just yeah. one, like a lot of companies too, they fail because they build one product and then you can kind of easily yeah. replicate yeah. that with open source. Well, we have like now, 10 amazing products. You guys right? became a service provider exactly. to the market that was enabling your success. Exactly, exactly. And that was the key. Yeah, and, and we still embrace open source community because we're open source. Like yeah. any of our customers can do whatever they want with their data. Like we don't own anyone's data, right? So, you know, yeah, I mean, if you want to go run it yourself, go run it yourself. By the way, people might not know this, but at Data AI Summit, the keynote is so packed, I'd say maybe half if not two thirds of the audience our technical developers. Yeah, they're all developers. They they're rush developers. the stage, they knock over the security yeah, guards. It's like a rock concert. Yeah, yeah. Watching Ollie trying to stay on script is fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's he's a character, um, for sure. Well, great to have you on. Again, congratulations. We've been following Databricks again from day one, watching you guys innovate. It's been fun to watch and document. Um, and you know, now that you guys are successful, uh, don't forget about us little, us little guys. <laughs> well, you yeah. know, thanks for having me. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, we're just getting started. You've got Asian right? Bricks, right? Yeah. Asian Bricks is out. Asian Bricks is amazing. Asian Bricks. Lake Place. Do you have Media Bricks yet? We don't. Okay. <laughs> we need Media Bricks. You need Media Bricks. We need know? Media Bricks. I like that. Like, Help us with that. Co let's co-develop it. Okay, we can open done. source it. I love that. Co-design. Let's yeah, talk about co-design. I like this. This is an interesting time because NVIDIA talks about this all the time and yeah. you're seeing successful ecosystems yeah. develop and the go-to-market is not just sales. Yep. It's partner sales, Massive. ecosystem. Yep. Talk about how co-design isn't just a technical thing. Yeah, it's exactly. Because the business model innovation actually is a big story. So if you think about it, the future is going to be all agents, like there's not going to be humans creating databases. It's all agentic, yeah. coding assistance, all these other applications that are having to create these databases. And so, uh, you know, we're code so developing. It's, it's part of your go to market, right? It, it, entirely, exactly. So I was talking with Ollie, um, my good friend Pete Sonsini and co-founder Andy started Loud Ventures. Yep. They did this new incubator research thing. Yep. That is huge. Talk yep. about how that's impacting the go to market because the role of research isn't like I'm a researcher at Cal or yep. wherever. It's a, almost applied research, almost like go-to-market effect. Yeah, and we run tons of startup programs, both with our VCs as well as with, I mean, we have 650 university programs now that run Databricks as part, I mean, being a data scientist and an AI yeah. engineer is like literally the <laughs> highest paying job you can get out <laughs> of college nowadays, right? So um, we run all those programs to try to, you know, just like a VC model, we don't know who's going to be the next Databricks or OpenAI yeah. or Anthropic, yeah. so we're helping all of them innovate, right? Ron, great to have you on theCUBE. Yeah, Thanks for coming you. into our studio. What do you think Absolutely. about the NYSE Oh YouTube man, studio? incredible. <laughs> very cool, very it's quiet cool. quiet now. Yeah, very cool, I loved it. <laughs> What's that scene from Trading Places? <laughs> Get those traders back in here, turn those machines back I on. love the guy running back and forth yelling <laughs> at, uh, Yo, get that trade done. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, that's money. As a, as a CRO, you love the sales culture. That's right, dude. Let's was, get that sales. He was hustling. <laughs> I'll hire that guy, I like that. Ron, thanks for coming yeah, in. CRO absolutely. of Databricks, breaking down, again, uh, the innovations on the business model, the go-to-market. This is, again, a big part of the value of AI productivity. Uh, Agent technology can really um, solve a lot of those mundane toil problems, but also get down to the precision. And this is where AI will certainly will create a lot of value and, again, extract value as well. This is theCUBE doing our part to bring you that value here. Thanks for watching. <laughs>